a visit to the Jamaica Inn on Bodmin Moor. I was just stopped at a service, service station and had a, <coughs> a visit to McDonald's. And now we're, we're back on the N5, heading south towards, where are we going, Mandy? The Jamaica Inn at Bodmin. You have to say that a bit louder because the engine's very loud. Okay, I said we're off to Bodmin Moor and the Jamaica Inn. We're on the A30 now, having come to the end of the M5, southern end of it, and we're heading towards Oakhampton and then on to Launceston and finally Jamaica Inn. And Mandy said, when we get down here, we're going to have beautiful blue skies and sunshine. <laughs> Look at it! Look at it! Give it time! Give it time! Well, we're almost there. We're just up the road, point three of a mile. Oh, didn't expect that there then. This here. is it here, isn't it? Sorry? This is it here. Is it? I think so. On the right. What's he doing? Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh. Idiot. There, Jamaica Inn. Whoa, we've been already. This is Jamaica Inn. Now we'll go over and see where we can park for the night. Hopefully where we are now. We won't have to move again. So half a bit of time. You can get through to the smuggler by here anyway. An inn has stood here since 1547. The current building dates from 1750. It was extended in 1778. It is often commonly thought that the inn takes its name from the smugglers who smuggled rum into the country from Jamaica and stored it at the inn. However, the name of the inn is actually said to derive from the important local Trelawney family of landowners of which two family members served as governors of Jamaica in the 18th century. Well, there's an interesting little fact that Arthur McLean, the author, owned this inn from 1964 until 1973, but only stayed here for three days during that period. And of course, he is a well known author. And there's uh, some of his books, some of which I've read. Yeah. I Station Zebra, well known one. But now <coughs> we've got permission to stay, we've paid, and uh, we're allowed to fetch the dogs in when we eat later on. So we'll pass through there. Cornwall has been very aptly described as the haven for smugglers in view of its rocky coves, sheltered bays, tumultuous waves and wild and untamed landscapes. The inn became a smuggler's stopping point while they used approximately 100 secret routes to move their contraband around. The Jamaica Inn has long been associated with smuggling, the two main products being rum and, believe it or not, tea. Many of the smugglers stored their contraband in the isolated location of Jamaica Inn. It also said that even the judges were fairly lenient towards the smugglers, probably due to their receiving some of the smuggled goods. And if that's not bribery, then what is? 
Well, this is the area where we can uh, bring the dogs in tonight. Nice, plenty of room, and it's not going to be busy. So they say. Um, it looks quite nice. There's a sign up there that says, one cannot think well, love well, sleep well, if one has not dined well. And we'll see how good the food is. <laughs> well, there are times when things go, everything goes right. And there are other times when everything goes wrong. And today is one of those things. Um, the diesel heater, which had been working perfectly, decided not to work. Um, I was topped up with gas when we were in uh, the Outer Hebrides, and would you believe, both bottles are now empty. One of them is my fault because I clean forgot to refill the, the, the empty one. But how the other one uh, became empty, I really, really don't know. So we have no gas to make tea or anything else. We're not plugged in because we're in a pub car park. Uh, and of course we have no heating because the diesel heater is not working. So uh, Mandy's found a hotel, a Jamaica Inn, and uh, she's done a deal, well, it's a, a Dulux or a superior double where they will take the two little dogs. And uh, we're going in the hotel for bed and breakfast. And Gwendolyn will stay in the car park I found a dealer to get more gas in the morning, so that will be all right. But um, what the heck's the matter with the diesel heater, I don't know. But tomorrow night and the night after, we're in a, a campsite with a electric hookup. So I've got an electric heater, so that will be okay. And we'll just have to sort out the um, diesel heater on board. And unfortunately, there used to be uh, a specialist or dealer in Cardiff where you could get it serviced, which I this is where I've had it serviced, but um, they've closed down. And I think the nearest one now, as far as I can make out, is in Manchester. So uh, we, we might be doing my, what Mandy suggested and going up there for a day with both the motorhomes. Um, and uh, stay somewhere while they service ours. Oh dear, what a kerfuffle. Never mind. Cheers. I poured you a drink, Mandy. Oh, lovely, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, pick the glass up then and put it near your mouth. I will, I'm just washing my glasses so I can see said glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like being on the bow of the Titanic out there. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. So this is the room we've got, which is a superior double. And the doggy's got their beds provided. And they got um, bowls and uh, treat bags each. Yeah, and look. Yeah, and inside the treat bags were. We have. Oh, what do we have? Um, two chew sticks. Two chew sticks. And a ball. A ball. And poo bags. Poo bags. Oh, is that for you or, two or the poo dogs? Bags for the dogs. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> well, they might be for you. No, oh, it might be. You there never know. At my age, you never um, know. <laughs> And they've got, I think that's lovely, look at that. 
Yes, very nice indeed. Well, you can play with those later, girl, but now you need to and, be uh, doing very nice with a, a proper bathroom, proper bath. So, yeah, and it's warm. And we've got tea making facilities, but I forgot to fetch the Earl Grey. Well, the dogs have enjoyed their dinner. Um, they cleared their bread, they cleared their bowls. Make sure it's empty, Luna, make sure it's empty. But now we need to go and get fed. Here we are at the Jamaica Inn and we have drinks. And I've got a pint of the Beast of Bodmin. I actually thought it was going to be a cider, but it isn't, it's an ale. And it, it tastes really nice though. I just wasn't expecting it to be that colour. And Michael's got the same, haven't you? Half pint. Half. You see, me, pint. You see, do you know what? You can take the girl out of Wensbury, but you can't take Wensbury out the girl. And I think that's marvellous. Cheers. Michael has ham, egg and chips, yeah. two eggs, look at that, Oof. and I have the good old favourite fish and chips, and when you cut into that batter, ah, oh, lovely, crispy, crunchy, fabulous, and I bet the fish is white, Ah, oh, yeah. Look at that. Fabulous. Oh. Well done, the Jamaica Inn. Okay? Yep. We're going to go through to the museum. I can't slide slope. Okay. Like the slope. Like the slope. Okay. So the Jamaica Inn can be found in the hamlet of Bolventa on Bodmin Moor. Now this is over 900 foot above sea level, meaning that you can see the Jamaica Inn as this silent sentinel for miles and miles around. You can arrive and it's brilliant sunshine and then when it gets dark and the wind blows and the rain is battering the windows and you look outside and you cannot see a thing. Not purely for the stars. A visit to the museum in the, uh, in the inn is well worth it. It starts off with a, a 10 minute very informative video and then you pass through to the exhibition area. There are lots of things that I don't know and I've never heard of and I certainly hadn't heard of tea bricks and apparently this is loose tea here um, it was made it pressed into bricks and um, marked like that and then used as money and it also made transporting the tea uh, better because um, tea on its own loose like this is uh, bulky well that's uh, that's interesting and you can see why tea was uh, smuggled look at the tax rate you could quite easily spend hours and hours in here reading all the uh, descriptions and the looking at the exhibits and it really is interesting and featured greatly in the uh, in the museum is Daphne du Maurier uh, the famous authoress who wrote uh, a novel called Jamaica Inn in 1936 well I had a good night's sleep and uh, it'll soon be time for breakfast. And there's another thing that uh, Jamaica Inn is well known for, and that is ghosts. And there are several paranormal groups that have visited. In fact, there was one coming this uh, tonight after we after we left. Um, and it's reputed that um, anyway. No, I'll tell you after breakfast. I'll tell you after breakfast. In the meantime, let's have a look at the front of Jamaica Inn. It is a fascinating place, well worth a visit if you're ever in Cornwall, and in particular 
on Bodmin Moor. But if you come in the summertime, I can assure you this place is going to be packed. So if you do plan a visit, come out of season much better. We're in the breakfast room and there's Luna waiting patiently for her sausages and she can smell them. And Tilly's not really bothered because she, she's an old hand at this. She knows she'll get it eventually. It's just cooling down. Luna, we need to wait for them to cool. See, there they are. But I think they're so big, maybe um, you should only have half each and we'll save the other for lunchtime, shall we? Luna, Luna. Should we save one for, for lunchtime? Shall we? We're not sure about that. Several ghosts are said to wander within and around the Jamaica Inn's old interior. Phantom footsteps have been heard plodding along the corridors at the dead of night and see nothing. The murmur of agitated conversations in some foreign tongue or forgotten dialect has also been heard in the darker corners of otherwise empty rooms. And we found one in our mirror. And Mandy tried to trace it down using her dowsing rods. But then the next day... It's the 9th of February 2024 and it's our 11th wedding anniversary. And look at this wonderful starter that Michael's prepared. We've got chopped onion and boiled egg with caviar in that pot there and homemade or should I say Gwendolyn made um, Melba toast with butter in the most wonderful antique plastic dish <laughs> and a shot of vodka each because that's what you do so i must say i'm impressed michael thank thanks you. very much thank you well happy anniversary happy anniversary and enjoy i shall tuck in tuck in mm -hmm.